So I'm going to show you now how to use the, the bar model um, to do these bar modeling starters. Sometimes it's called the Singapore bar model, which makes it sound a bit fancy, but it's basically, it's basically a rectangle. Uh, kids should be a bit familiar for, with this from maths and possibly from primary school as well. But um, it's just a way to visualize maths problems, okay? Um, and I mean, it's basically just a rectangle. So to roast a chicken, takes 15 minutes, so this might be for HFT, so 15 minutes plus 20 minutes per pound. How long does it take to cook a five pound chicken? So we've got one lot of 15 minutes and five lots of 20 minutes, okay? And the idea is that um, you're looking to work out this total and just whatever you would do to work out that total, you kind of do the maths for it, okay? So we've got five lots of 20, for example, so you'd need to do 20 times five. Now, don't you go worrying about how to set out a sum of 5 times 20 on the board. Do you do a vertical sum or anything like that? Get the kids get the kids to tell you how they do it. Don't you? The point is that it's not you doing numeracy. It's getting the kids to do it. So they'll, you know, they should be able to tell you that's 100 minutes. And go and ask them, like, how do you know that? And then they can, they can explain it. They can teach the other kids. Okay, so that bit is 100 minutes. And then we're adding on the 15, obviously getting 115 minutes. Okay, and you probably want to write that in hours and minutes, do you know? Just however you would present the answer in your subject, you probably wouldn't say, do you know, in HFT you wouldn't, maybe you would, you maybe say 115 minutes, or you'd probably, you'd be more likely, I suppose, to say one hour and 55 minutes. So get the kids, however you want the answer to look at the end, you get the kids to tell you that and explain how they got it. Okay, so here's another example for art. So I didn't know this, do you know? I've learned all kinds of lovely things about numeracy across the curriculum, making up these wee starters. So when you're mixing inks for screen printing, you need to use three parts binder to one part acrylic. Okay, so in maths, we call this a three to one ratio and write that as three colon one. Okay, so Basically, part A, you've got 300 millilitres of binder. How much acrylic would you need? So you just draw out your wee... I would just draw a rectangle on the board, and it doesn't need to be perfect. Although, if it's an art teacher drawing, it probably will look perfect. Okay, and let's put, like, B for binder. Three parts binder, one part acrylic. And they're telling us in the question that this bit, the binder bit, is 300 millilitres. Okay, so... What's the maths I need to do? Well, I want to work out what one box is and I know what three boxes are. So I'm going to split that into three equal bits. I'm going to do a bit of division. And don't worry about, you know, setting out one of these division sums that you saw at school. Get the kids, get the kids to do it. And if one of them wants to come up to the board, staying two metres away from you and show you how to do it, let's put units in there. Okay then that's fine, do you know, if they want to come up and demonstrate how to do that and teach the rest of them. That's the idea. Rather than you guys becoming maths teachers, it's getting the kids to see how numeracy turns up elsewhere. Okay, so we can see here that there we need 100 millilitres of acrylic. Okay, or for part B, okay, you've got 150 millilitres of acrylic, how much binder would you need? Same goes, I've got my bar split into four roughly equal bits, but now this bit is, what am I even doing here? This bit's 150 millilitres and you want to work out how much binder there is, okay? So all the bits are the same size, so I'm just doing 150 times three for those three bits there and getting 450 millilitres. And the kids will have all kinds of weird and wonderful ways to do that. So they'll tell you, oh, 300s is 300, and 350s is 150, and then they add them together, or they might do a, do you know, a chimney sum like this. Or, do you know, however they do it is fine, okay, as long as, as long as it's right in the end, okay? Part C, let's use the, the ready-made picture here, okay? If you wanted to use 80 millilitres of ink overall, how much acrylic and binder would you need to use? Well, if 
we've got 80 milliliters all together, then I need to split that into four. Okay, so they're going to need to do 80 divided by four is 20. Do try and get them, I'm happy for them to kind of do maths in their head and explain just out loud without writing out working. But do kind of try and get them to say what mathematical operation they're using. Like I'm, you're dividing that by four. Now you're going to need to, to get the binder, you need to multiply by three. Okay. Is 60 milliliters. And for acrylic, you don't need to do anything. That's just 20 milliliters. Okay. The next one um, is for the science teacher, so don't worry if you can't remember what scientific notation is, okay? I'm not gonna, not gonna test you, okay? So feel free to switch off for this one if scientific notation does not come up in your subject. So water molecule contains two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, okay, H2O. There's about 1.8 times 10 to the power of 21 molecules in one drop of water. How many hydrogen atoms are there in? The drop of water so there's you know two thirds of them are hydrogen so we're going to need to take this overall number and split it into three to work out how much is in one box and then double it to work out what's in the two hydrogen boxes all together okay so in one box well you could you know draw it out of them you know that 18 divided by three is six so what's 1.8 times 10 to the power of 21 divided by 3, well, it's going to be 0 0.6 times 10 to the power of 21. And it's kind of fine just to leave it like that for now as an intermediate step, unless, I mean, you could convert it to 6 times 10 to the power of 20. But we're going to double it. So each of these bits is 6. 0 0.6 times 10 to the power of 21. And we need to double that, so... 0 0.6 times 10 to the 21 doubled is 1.2 times 10 to the power of 21. We're back to proper um, scientific notation. There, okay, there's actually, see if you look in the CPD section for staff, there's a whole article for our chemistry teachers about using the bar model that you might find quite useful, okay? And let me show you now on, on GLOW some of the things that I've got made up. Okay, so on your glow, okay, you've got your launch pad and I've got the SharePoint. There is a tile, but if you don't have it, if you click on the house and then the SharePoint and then numeracy across learning, okay, and then you're obviously staff, resources and resources by subject. Now, not every subject's got bar model starters, but just in case your one does. So for example, let's have a look at technology and bar model starters. And there's a lot of them are just wee puzzles. Now these, I didn't make these up. These are quite nice. Um, is this gonna work? Right, the problem is it kind of shows you the answer straight away. So make sure, see if kids are coming, if you want to use it as a starter, um, make sure you're not you don't have that first screen you're like displaying this screen on the board when they come in you're not um showing them the answer straight away so piece of wood's cut in half then in half again the length of the wood that's left is 12 centimeters how long was the piece of wood to begin with now there's no bar model to begin with so you could get them to draw a bar model for it okay um but it does show you so here's your piece of wood cutting it in half half again um and you're trying to work out what's this one length well that bit's 12 centimeters you want to work out what the whole original length was so if we split it into four we've got four lots of 12 there and it goes through it all for you and um, these are from uh, the white rose maths website i didn't make these up um you can see they're very very swanky very pretty so it goes it goes through the whole thing so you don't need to you don't need to do anything really except click through for most of the bar model starters that are there some of the ones that i've made up you're going to maybe need to do a bit more like i just demonstrated 
but for these ones that are um, kind of ready made up you just need to click through them okay and the kids can see what's what's what so there's quite a few wee puzzles puzzles like that